Um, I'm feeling great, and I, I kind of want to get back to the farm just to have a little bit of a break from all of this, so I'm excited to get back home. I don't know if the, uh, if the you know, the surge of energy is about, like, beating Blake necessarily. I think, for me, and I'm not trying to be all serious or whatever, but you got to think about, uh, you know, who this guy is, and where he comes from, and what he represents, and what he stayed true to the entire time, and how it never faltered. The, you know, the whole, the whole stint was just him just saying, this is what I like to do, these are the kind of songs I like, um, and I never interfered. So I just feel good that like, I was able to sit back and watch this guy just, just do his thing, be himself. And uh, that, that's a pleasure to me, to not change him. I mean, I was, I was a little nervous about singing with John Fogarty. <laughs> but I mean, I was really just excited for the night. I got to see all the top 20 again and perform with them, so that was super fun. And I wasn't really nervous about winning or losing because I knew I'd be happy no matter what. And I was just happy for the night. And you tap into something that Mr. Fogarty has obviously taps into. You've done his songs. You got to sing next to him tonight. He took time out of his tour. He sounds better than he's ever sounded. And to me, as a music fan, not even the producer or the host, that was just, I think, between the Ray moment last night and John tonight, two of the greatest moments we've ever had on the show. Wow. What was that like to sing with John? Oh, it's, it was amazing just to meet him and sing with him. And I, was, I just felt so blessed that I was able to sing a song with him that I... I mean, Have You Ever Seen the Rain was the second song I ever learned, and I've, I've always loved Credence, and I've ever, always loved John Fogarty, so I, I, was, I just felt so blessed to sing with him. Weren't you amazed at how well he could sing, too? I mean, I mean he's 16. <laughs> <laughs> he sounded great. That was he just, just turned cool 16 moment. in April, right. just, just saying. Yeah. I mean, sorry, March 31st, sorry. He's 16. <laughs> Those are the moments that we try and make on this show, and it doesn't matter who wins and who loses, but when you watch moments like Sawyer with John Fogarty tonight, I mean, that, that, for us as a TV show, those are winning moments. That's when I look at the coaches who are all busy people all over the globe and they have this look of like, that's why I do this show. That was a great moment tonight. I mean, I mean working with Rel has been amazing. He's just an amazing person and I feel like I've learned so much through him and just working with him has just been awesome. And I, I, I couldn't ask for a better coach and I, I feel like he's really helped me through all this and really wanted me to be true to myself and I think that was the biggest thing he wanted me to be was just stay true to myself and enjoy the music. Right when you think that like it takes one thing to make it um, or you have to be this or you have to sing this kind of song or you have to dress this kind of way or if you have to talk this kind of way here's a guy that possesses this ability to tap into something that we all know is bigger than all of us. And he's humble. And he's proud of being a farmhand. And he's named all his animals, <laughs> believe it or not, straight up. And he has this amazing life that he wouldn't trade for anything. And he is the one that won. And he got a car. <laughs> and he loves Ray LaMontagne. <laughs> and Ray wrote him a song. <laughs> and CCR was the first song, you know, the second song that he ever learned. And he, you know, he comes out here tonight and does like a medley with John Fogarty. And he won. <laughs> Wait, and how old is he? Six, 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 six. <laughs> Awesome. Um, we saw once you won, you had a laugh with Christina. What did she say to you? She says it. She said it was all my fault. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't really know what that means. But <laughs> Sawyer, have you gotten used to the idea that you are now uh, a celebrity? Um, no, no, I don't think I'll ever. <laughs> what you will notice is that there are times when he gets louder. That's when he's a little nervous. And it's amazing. It's flawless. I've never seen anything like that before. It's like, when I get nervous, I, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of scary. Him, it just sounds better. Just louder and more confident. I have three hats, and I got my first hat when I was 11 years old from an antique shop that I just, I, I just always loved them. Is that going to be your sense of style going forward? <laughs> It's good. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think it will be. I love this show. Um, and to be, to be honest with you, um, 
I don't know that there's another show that gives you uh, this this amount of like um, diversity. I mean, you have this, you have this, you know, he was 15 when he came on, um, and then again, like I said, you know, 70 70 year old incredible John Fogerty tonight on the finale. Show me another show that does that, that finds the value in classic, you know, southern rock. Uh, bands that, that have influenced us all. Like, show me another show. Like, so for me, like I, like, I love this place. We get to break the rules and do all kinds of things. I mean, I got a chance to do a song with Mia Z once she was off the show, and now, you know, video's up, song's out. Like, we're doing things completely unconventional because this smart man here, uh, you know, has great instincts, and he allows the artists to be artists, and he allows the coaches to to uh, contribute to different aspects of the show, and it's just like this growing thing that you know I can't do it unless I'm involved. So I I, I love it here. Um, as far as I know, the song was written especially for me. I mean, I got I got a text from Ray, and he sent me one of it, the songs that he just kind of played through, kind of loose, and he really just sat down and recorded it, and just wanted me to hear it. So. I mean, just getting that was just like amazing because I was just like hearing his voice and I knew it was like the only, I was the only one who was getting to hear him sing this song and it, it, it was amazing and I just, I'm just so happy right now. <laughs> go home yep. and go be with your family yep. and take all this in yep. and then, you know, we'll, we'll figure out what, you know, we'll help you get to the, to the next place. But, you know, we're, we're all about surrounding yourself with your family right now. So that would be our, my advice. I completely agree. I mean, it's it's you got to think about it. It's the farm. It's the the farm and the family that help provide the incredible conditions that made this storm right here. <laughs> it's great, man. Like you got to go back home. It's, without that, what do you have? I mean, this whole thing has been amazing, and I think the best part is just meeting all these new people and just making all these great connections with all the other contestants. I mean. They have so many great ideas, and so they're all very original, and just meeting them and hearing their voice and hearing what they have to say is amazing, so I think that was the biggest part, for, best part for me. I mean, I think the biggest advice is to stay true to yourself and not really worry what other people think, and just, if you enjoy music, then follow music. Um, my dad said I was, he was proud of me. <laughs> But I know, I know my family have been always been proud of me through this whole entire experience, and I know they will always be proud of me no matter what. You know what's crazy though? Like I, the thing is, is that when he goes back home, the farm, the farm is now famous. So like, I'm pretty sure like it's not gonna be an empty yard when he gets back. All the cows are gonna be wearing these hats, just like this. <laughs> Twenty of them. I mean, I would, I would love to do a duet with um, Raylan Montaigne, just because I, I really want to meet him. <laughs> I'm hoping the day off is on my farm, so I'm really just excited to be able to get back to work on the farm and just really take in the open space and just the nature around my home. It's just amazing. So you can't I'm make this up. <laughs> Pharrell, what was the most rewarding thing that, as a coach, you learned this season? Oh, uh, you know, just watching these guys stay true to themselves, you know, and being cool with whether, where, wherever it landed them. That's the cool thing. Like that's super rewarding to me, that this guy came on and he stayed who he was. And again, I, like I really honestly feel like there's like the, 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 uh, the, the farmer's demographic, like I honestly feel like to today was their day, you know? Cause they, they have somebody that really represents them in the way that he does. Like that's, like I said, you can't make this up. I'm totally gonna support him on his album, A. And B, um, when I was 16, I did not sound like that. Yeah. No. <laughs> he's, a, he, he's an anomaly. It's something else, you know? You, you, right? I mean, you've not, what do you see something? I mean, we're so happy that somebody like Sawyer won. I was watching um, Eddie Vedder sing for Dave on CBS the other night. The, the Eddie Vedder, did you see him do Better Man? No. He did it with Paul Schaefer. It was really amazing. And I thought of Sawyer, actually. Adam said last night, the Ray LaMontagne, he's like, that's if Eddie Vedder gave me a song, because he's older than you. And I really could relate to that moment, because I know how much Adam likes Eddie Vedder. And then watching Eddie 
sing for, for David Letterman. It was a really powerful moment. You know, it wasn't like a spot on perfect performance, but I think that's what we all as music fans liked so much about it because the heart was there. You know, obviously Eddie Vedder was there for Dave and it was a really great moment. And I just, I, I see so much of that in Sawyer when he sings that he's singing and he does, he, he touches his heart and that's his, his conduit to like, it's from him to us. And, and, and that, it, you know, for us as a TV show, trying to promote great, credible music, you know, that, that this is what we look for. And it's intangible and it's really incredible. Um, so, I mean, I thought of that. And really for Pharrell, and I'll, I'll just say this sort of in summary about this particular season of The Voice. When we started the show, and Mark can attest to this, we saw a big shift in the way that people were succeeding in music, and it was existing outside of record companies, and the paradigm was shifting in the way we saw so much mentoring going on. You know, we think about Usher and Justin Timberlake fighting for this young YouTube star and Justin Bieber and technology, and, and this show really sort of, you know, hit the, hit the ground running and, and really swung for the fences on a network to put together kind of the new way that young, great musicians are, are supported, are found and supported, not judged, that's why they're coaches. And, you know, so, all, so Pharrell has been such an incredible, incredible addition to our coaching panel. So congratulations to you, because you do what, exactly what we look for in a coach, on and off camera, like the Mia Z thing, um, and, and there's so many great examples of that. So congratulations to you too. Thank you, Carson. And it's, it's a pleasure to be up here with you as well. Like oh, you're you incredibly me. supportive, but at the same time, your your musical taste is just it's beyond. And to be even considered, well, I'm grateful. That's why we're all here, and I think it's why we're proud of of Sawyer because he represents everything at the core of what the Voice wants to achieve musically. Yeah, we're, we're all sure. coming. Yeah, it's going to be a good. We're going to have great coaches. <laughs> Red chairs gonna be turning. Blake will be drunk. What else do you want? <laughs> we'll we'll be there for you in the fall. No, season nine is awesome, and um, I think that's all I can say. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Every day I'm worrying about that just because. I mean, some days my head voice is gone, and then I have to find different notes to hit. I mean, when I when I was younger, I was writing songs, and then. I was singing a lot in my head voice and had a very, very kind of like an angel voice sound to it. And as I got older, my voice literally dropped like two steps. So I had to tune my guitar down and figure out how I was going to sing my songs. And it was very difficult for me at that time. I mean, my voice is still changing. So I'm, I'm just seeing, I mean, it's starting to thing. settle. <laughs> but here's the thing. You now know that there's a reason for everything. When it was difficult and you didn't understand why it was going down two steps, I think everybody here tonight knows why your voice changed. Because you changed the show, you changed, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you changed America, and I honestly think you, you changed, you changed America. I'll just leave it at that. You changed America. Almost definitely. I mean, there's so many artists on the show that I think are just amazing and I think they would suit in just a duet or one songs. And I know a lot of them are also amazing writers and just working with them would be so cool. So yeah, definitely. <laughs> I mean, I definitely want to work with Mia Z and I know I kind of want to work with Noelle again just because I love their duet together. And I mean, I need to like, it would take me a time to put down a list of who I would want to sing. <laughs> But yes, most definitely I would like to sing with a lot of the artists on the show. <laughs>